Good morning, folks. Today we're going to be continuing our study of astronomy. This is Domain 7, and we're going to be talking about particular people who have made great contributions to our understanding of astronomy. We're going to start with Nicholas Copernicus. Um, we'll need some vocabulary as we think about that. Calculations, mathematical methods used. Mathematical methods used to answer a question. Diurnal is having a daily cycle or occurring daily as a result of the Earth's 24-hour rotation around its axis. Geocentric. Geo has to do with the Earth being the, and centric is the center. So having the Earth as the center, geocentric. Or heliocentric. Helio is the Greek god of the sun. So heliocentric would be having the sun at the center. Hypothesis. It's an idea that's based on observation and experimentation, but that is not commonly accepted. Logical. It makes sense in an organized step-by-step -step way. Opposed is resisted. Or if you were against something, you were opposed to something. So you're going to hear vocabulary words that are related to the process or work of science and also sometimes to our everyday lives. So the word hypothesis is um, a word maybe you've only heard just in the definitions that we just gave. It's an idea based on observation and experimentation, but that is not commonly accepted. Everyday, ordinary people come up with a hypothesis to explain why something happens as it does. For example, you might make a hypothesis to explain why a pet behaves a certain way. People often make a hypothesis about why they get sick or don't get sick. People make hypotheses as they try to get a better understanding about how something in the world works. After a person makes a hypothesis about why something happens, the next step is to gather evidence by observing closely and finding a way to test that idea. The evidence they find might cause them to change the hypothesis or to be more certain of it. If a lot of evidence is found in support of a hypothesis and a lot of people accept that it is true, then it becomes a theory. Today you're going to hear more about our solar system as we learn about an important astronomer who lived in the late 1400s and the 1500s. His name was Nicholas Copernicus. Uh, Nicholas Copernicus studied space. His views and new ideas about space shocked many people, and it changed what people knew about astronomy forever. Back when Nicholas Copernicus was alive, everyone had a very different idea about how the universe was arranged. So listen to find out how people used to think about the universe, was how it was arranged, and how they responded to Copernicus's new ideas. How would you like to present the world with a new idea about how something works? What if besides being new, your idea was so different from the ideas that people had believed for so long that people were opposed to even listening to their ideas? That kind of fierce opposition is exactly what a man named Nicholas Copernicus experienced hundreds of years ago when he had a new idea about astronomy. Nicholas Copernicus was just a regular person like you. He was born in Poland in 1473, and he was raised by his uncle because both of his parents died when he was about 10 years old. Copernicus went to universities in Poland and Italy and became a clergyman and a doctor. Copernicus studied many subjects, including math, philosophy, church law, and medicine. But his favorite subject of all, and the thing that he made a big new idea about, was astronomy. As you have learned, astronomy is the study of the stars, space, and the universe, and astronomers are scientists who study these amazing phenomena. Long before Copernicus was born, the Greek philosopher Aristotle observed that the sun appeared to rise in the east and set in the west. Because Aristotle observed this diurnal motion of the sun with his own eyes, he and many others believed that the earth was stationary and that the sun and all the other planets orbited around it. These observations and the strong belief in this way of looking at the universe shaped people's views for a very long time. 
For more than 1,000 years before Copernicus was born, most astronomers and many other people believed that the universe was geocentric. In other words, scientists thought that Earth was the center of the solar system and the universe. They believed Earth stood still and the sun of all, and all of the planets and the moon circled around it, while the stars remained fixed in a rotating sphere that was farther away. You've heard that most people believed this geocentric theory of the universe for more than 1,000 years. Why? Because it was the best explanation anyone had come up with for why the sun and planets appeared to move the way they did. All of our observations were from Earth. Remember, people did not have all of the scientific tools back then that we have today, such as artificial satellites, spaceships, and high-powered telescopes. These tools have greatly expanded modern understandings of space through new opportunities for observation and gathering data. Think about the difference between a person standing on Earth looking around and a person in an airplane looking down on the Earth-bound person. The person in the airplane can see a much wider scope of Earth. Powerful telescopes have given us this new kind of perspective when we look into outer space. Most Greeks, including the famous philosopher Aristotle, believed the geocentric theory. There were a few exceptions, such as the Greek astronomer Aristarchus, who, after much study, concluded that the sun was much larger than Earth and that it was Earth that moved around the sun. His new idea, called a hypothesis, was never accepted by ancient astronomers, but after many, many years, Aristarchus's ideas greatly influenced other astronomers in their studies. Most ancient Romans believed the geocentric theory. During this time, it was the official position of the powerful Roman Catholic Church. Most astronomers were afraid to question it or explore other hypotheses, though there were others before Copernicus who were trying to work out alternative explanations. When Copernicus was born in 1473, almost everyone in Europe believed in this geocentric theory too, and almost everyone had no idea that this theory of the universe was about to change. How could so many people have a completely different view of the universe than we do today? The answer is easy. All of what we know about the way the universe works, all of science, comes from the observations and logical thinking of regular people just like you and me. Astronomers have always used scientific theories to explain the movement of the stars and planets. Scientific theories aren't necessarily complicated or hard to understand. They're just possible explanations of how or why things happen. But remember, Scientific theories aren't just guesses. They are ideas that are based upon evidence and careful observation of the world, such as observing where the stars appear in the sky every night. Sometimes, however, what we think we are seeing is not what actually is, such as the world looking flat, but actually being round. A long time ago, stargazers spent a lot of time outside looking at the night sky and noticing patterns in the sky. Early astronomers knew that the planets had different movements than the stars, which circled around Polaris once each day. Astronomers observed that the planets moved slowly across the night sky along a certain pathway. But people had also started noticing some odd things about the motion of the planets as they followed their pathway. One of these odd things was that sometimes Mars and other planets made a strange backward loop in the sky. Scientists had tried to explain this motion using the geocentric theory of the universe, but the explanations became pretty complicated. Still, most people didn't question that Earth was the center of the universe. But Copernicus asked himself the question, if the planets were orbiting around Earth, why would they follow such complicated patterns? He didn't think they would. And so he used his logical mind to come up with a different scientific, scientific hypothesis that would better explain this strange looping motion. Copernicus had also, um, also had the work of Aristarchus long before to add to his own studies. In science, often the work of one scientist is built upon the work of many scientists who have come before him or her.
What was the scientific hypothesis that Copernicus decided upon? It was a heliocentric hypothesis of the universe. Does this sound familiar? This was the hypothesis of Aristarchus more than 1,000 years earlier. By using mathematics to make careful calculations of the position of the sun, planets, and other celestial bodies, Nicholas Copernicus came to the same conclusion, that the sun was at the center of everything. He believed that Earth orbited around the sun along with the rest of the planets. Copernicus also, also hypothesized that the Earth is spinning and rotates on its own axis. Of course, we now know that the Earth does rotate on its own axis. We also know that although the Sun isn't the center of the universe, it is the center of our solar system. So, the heliocentric scientific hypothesis Copernicus presented in the 1600s that was built upon the scientific hypothesis Aristarchus had presented more than 1,000 years earlier was much closer to the truth than the geocentric theory that had been held for so many years. Unfortunately, similar to Aristarchus, Copernicus's hypothesis was not widely accepted by people during his lifetime. For one thing, people thought that if the earth was spinning, all the things on it would be thrown off the earth and into space. They didn't understand that the force of gravity holds us firmly on earth. Another part of the reason for this is that Copernicus's ideas were not published until literally the day he died. But another part of the reason that the heliocentric hypothesis was not widely accepted was that Copernicus's ideas challenged the belief held by most people that humans were the center of the universe. This was very difficult for many people to accept, so change came slowly. Still, as with the studies of Aristarchus, the studies of Copernicus greatly influenced the astronomers who came after him, including the great Italian astronomer Galileo Galilei. Galileo was inspired by the work of Copernicus and became one of the first astronomers to build and use a telescope to study space in more detail. As you heard earlier, Galileo discovered four of Jupiter's moons. He observed that the moons orbit Jupiter instead of the Earth. His discovers, discoveries provided further evidence that Aristarchus and Copernicus were although in a great minority, correct in their heliocentric theories. Nicholas Copernicus had made careful observation of the stars and other celestial bodies. He recorded these observations with great attention, but it was his willingness to ask questions, even when unpopular, that led him to a clearer answer. Each time you ask a question to help understanding to understand something better, you are following in the footsteps of the great astronomer Nicholas Copernicus. Asking questions to get closer to the truth is what the scientific process is all about. Copernicus's questioning mind and careful observations led him to new hypotheses about the arrangement of what we now know as the solar system. Though people were slow to accept his hypothesis, the astronomers who followed Copernicus gathered more and more evidence so that today the heliocentric view is the accepted theory. It's important to remember that new information and evidence often change our views about the world. So what did the astronomers believe for thousands of years before Copernicus's time about the arrangement of the universe? They believed that Earth was the center of everything and that it stood still while all the other celestial bodies orbited it. And what's the word that describes this Earth-centered view? Geocentric. Astronomers in Copernicus's time were puzzled about the movement of Mars and some of the other planets. What question did they have about the planet's movements, and how did this lead Copernicus to a new understanding? Well, astronomers wondered why Mars and some of the other planets seemed to travel back at times in their path across the night sky. This led Copernicus to think of other arrangements of the planets and the sun that would explain this odd and unexpected movement. 
Why did people have a difficult time believing that Earth was spinning in space? They thought that if Earth spun it in space, they would be thrown off it, as would all of the objects in, on Earth. So why don't people, objects, and the air we breathe float off into space? Because of Earth's gravity, and it's a force that keeps everything from disappearing into space. What was new about Copernicus's view of the world? He supported a heliocentric view with the sun in the center and Earth and the other planets orbiting around the sun. And why did people think about Copernicus's heliocentric, or what did they think about his heliocentric ideas? They were opposed to his ideas and very upset by them. He was afraid he would be punished. Name another astronomer who later worked to prove Copernicus's heliocentric view that Earth and other planets orbited the sun. Galileo. How did he support Copernicus's ideas with his own discoveries? Well, Galileo used a telescope and saw that Jupiter had four moons orbiting it, showing that there were some things in space that didn't orbit around Earth. What is the difference between a hypothesis and a theory? A hypothesis is an explanation about why something occurs. A theory is a hypothesis that has been tested and has become widely accepted. Describe a hypothesis that you have had about something in your life. What evidence do you have for your hypothesis? What else could you do to test your hypothesis more? Yeah, what events on Earth occur in a diurnal or daily basis? Day and night, the tides, the sun rising and setting. Good, good ideas. <laughs>